Yes, but there's still a few things that could see some improvements. Let's talk about it. This is probably the mostly I've ever been to a topic. Been busy moving into a new place, but I still wanted to get my thoughts out on this. Booster Pass 1 was a pretty big disappointment to just about everyone. Or mostly everyone. I made a whole damn video about that topic. It would seem Nintendo listened to the criticisms of Pack 1 because things are a tad better here. I mean, this still isn't Nintendo's A game. There is still a noticeable downgrade in quality compared to the many other tracks in the base game. But it is nice to see them put at least a little more effort in. I wanted to review each of the 8 tracks individually Visually, but before I do that, I want to mention an update they did to Coconut Mall. In Booster Pass 1, the cars did not move, like at all. It was extremely lazy and many people were vocal about it. This is one of the criticisms Nintendo definitely listened to, because they've now updated the cars to spin in a circle periodically. Many game journalists and basically all of Twitter are now deeming this fixed, but everyone claiming this change is fixing it are overlooking the entire challenge these cars originally presented on the Wii in the first place. So in Coconut Mall on Wii, the cars move back and forth. Simple pathing, sure, but it presented a dynamic challenge. Because these cars were always moving, you couldn't always take the same route. You had to look ahead and go, okay, that car over there is right here, it's moving forward at X speed, I'm moving forward at Y speed, so by the time I reach that car, it will be over there, meaning I should not veer left or right and continue forward. I broke down what is ultimately very simple forethought, but again, the challenge was dynamic, and didn't allow you to take the same route every time you were in this parking lot. Updating the cars to do quick Donuts is definitely less lazy looking, sure. But this update still doesn't fix the problem because much like when the cars didn't move at all, you steer to the left of the first car and then you steer to the right of the second car. They never change position, so that is the route you're gonna take every single time. Them doing periodic spins doesn't change that routing. It's cool Nintendo listened, but much like the track designs in the booster pass themselves, this is further proof that the DLC courses are flawed in more ways than just presentation. Anyways, let's see what we got in this booster shot tour whatever, starting with New York it. This was the premier track in Mario Kart Tour, and it's okay. Visually, I'd say this is on par of Paris Promenade. As to say, it doesn't look too bad, although certain models, particularly the buildings, look pretty flat. No interesting brick textures or those extruding pillars that generally come to mind when you think of New York architect. Just completely flat buildings. In fact, I don't think these buildings are textured at all. As for the track itself, it's fine. Every lap has a different route, much like the other two inclusions, which makes this more interesting than it would be otherwise. Mario Circuit 3. Ooh, man, this is a rough one. I've even heard people say Toad Circuit from Pack 1 looks better than this. I'm not sure which looks worse, but just the fact it's being compared to that at all is pretty bad. Remember how good Super Nintendo's Donut Planes 3 looked in Base 8? You looking at this? Alright, keep in mind what this looks like. Okay, now back to Booster Pass. Damn, what a downgrade. As for the layout itself, not particularly interesting. I actually think this map is okay on the Wii specifically because there's multiple great lines you can take for wheelies. Here in 8, however, there's not a whole lot going on. Calamari Desert. Not bad. From a design standpoint at least. Visually, 8's closest comparison is either Bone Dry Dunes or Yoshi Valley, both of which feel more visually populated. Thankfully, Mario Kart 8's fantastic lighting engine does a lot of heavy lifting here to still make this track look pretty good. The most notable thing about this N64 callback is that you actually drive on the track train tracks for the second lap. A cool idea that adds a lot to what is otherwise one of the more linear maps. Waluigi Pinball. Anyone who's watched my Mario Kart DS review already knows while I do like this map, I... Eh, look, just watch the review if you want to know what I think of the course itself because I don't want to spend like a chunk of this video reiterating. Well then, graphically, this looks fantastic. Waluigi Pinball was always one of the more visually interesting maps and Mario Kart 8's lighting engine really brings it to life here. I really like the neon lights, the high gloss finish on the pinball board itself allows for this cool diffuse reflection from the signage above, just a really great looking track. If I had to nitpick, most of the road you drive on up until you reach the pinball board is made up of like, a fabric texture? It's a nice texture picture for what it is, it's just, this is really out of place. I mean, when's the last time you saw a pinball machine of a woolen table in before a bunch of people Google it so they can go, um, actually, in the comments. P. Sherman 42 Wallaby Way Sydney. Sprint. The other past two tour track based on a real city. Of the four city maps from tour so far that are currently in 8, this is easily my favorite. While a lot of the models and textures still look a bit flat, artistically, I think this is one of the best looking tracks from tour. Well, besides this sh check this out. Early on in the race, you drive through this auditorium and holy crap, look how bad the audience looks. They are literally flat cutouts. These exact sprites are used in the base Mario Kart 8, but there, they were smart enough to have them way 
way back in the distance. There's a whole giant crowd of them, they're super small, and for that purpose, they look fine. But then here, they are like straight up in your face. Like for fuck's sakes, if you're going to position these this close to the player, at least turn them so they're facing the player. I mean, what the hell were they thinking here? This is Mario Kart, not Paper Mario, and I swear just the fuck with you. The second you leave that auditorium, all of the following characters on the sidelines are animated 3D models. Anyways, besides that, map looks nice. Every lap is different, and that soundtrack goes hard. Listen to this damn saxophone, it's amazing. Now that's the quality I would expect from Mario Kart 8. Brilliant stuff. Snowland. This is a GBA track recreated very nicely. The refractions on the icy road look fantastic, and this map has a beautiful color scheme. The soft pink skies and hues on the ice crystals really complement the otherwise dominant use of blues you would basically expect from a snow map. The track itself is a ton of fun as well. I love it when Nintendo adds depth to the once 2D tracks and brings new life into it. The one thing I need to mention is this damn bridge shortcut. You basically need to take this shortcut dead on. If you're angled too much to the left, you hit the bridge. Angled too much to the right, you hit the bridge. Unless I'm drawing a blank, I can't really think of another shortcut in Mario Kart 8 that is this temperamental. Among the really obvious ones at least. Because you don't even need to look for this one. You just see it the very first time you do one lap of this track. Mushroom Gorge. This is a fan favorite from Wii and it's represented well here. Not a whole lot to say here other than the fact they added a blue mushroom that initiates a glide. And especially on 200, you would think you could use your glider to fly over this small chasm before the finish line, but the game will like force you back to the ground. I really don't like automated pathing like this. Speaking of automated pathing, Sky High Sunday. This is a tour track and nearly every jump on this map has an expected trajectory and will push you up or down depending on where it wants you to be. It's extremely noticeable on 200 where it has you dropping like a rock after some of these jumps. Visually the map looks like Fall Guys. It's all so saturated. Not a bad looking map or anything, it's just jarring is all. Beyond looks, not a fan of this one's design, gotta be honest. I I already mentioned the heavily scripted jumps, but then for whatever reason this whole map is anti-grav, even though the map never has you driving upside down or even on walls. I mean after all, this is just a tour map and that game doesn't have anti-grav, so god forbid if Nintendo changed things up a little before porting it to 8. It's as if Nintendo looked at all the complaints they are getting that Wave 1 didn't have any anti-grav, so they just haphazardly slapped it onto this one. Then there's this railing here, but if you bump into it, it makes you spin? Actually no, you don't bump into it, you just drive straight through it. This looks really bad. It's well established in Mario Kart 8 that these spin boost pillars will spin you before initiating a boost. They have a distinct look so when you see one, you immediately identify what it does. But here, there is no visual indicator that these railings will make you spin. Why does it make you spin? I don't know, it just does I guess. Then you got the layout itself which is just an oval. If you like Excite Bike Arena, you might like this one too, but I'm personally not a fan of those maps where all you do is drive straight and shake the remote off a million jumps. So that's past two and despite ending on a bitter note, I would say it's otherwise an overall improvement. There's still a bit of work that needs to be done, but the general direction Nintendo is heading in is at least promising. The core selection is better, the maps definitely look better, I mean it still is on the level of base 8, but some of the maps such as Waluigi Pinball do get close. So uh, yeah, here's a half a gold star, Nintendo. Anyways, I'm now gonna go forget about this game for like 4 months until they announce Pass 3. See ya! Hey, thanks for watching. I wanted to get this out like way sooner, but I just moved into a new place, so that was eating up a lot of time. But I'm all moved in now, and I'd like to thank patrons such as David Marquezzi, All Sun Games, Gameplay1500, Kinsella Tien, Drew Kellenberger, David Pacheco, Jeffrey P. Long, Pretoria Mars, Amanda Guth, Rami Batter, and Abby Knudsen. Again, thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one.